Hi guys, Hannah here from Hannah Maria Plans and welcome to this video where we're going to be setting up my journal for 2020. I know we're a couple of months in at this point, but I couldn't bear leaving that much space in my old journal. So I'm currently just finishing up my Archer and Olive A5 size notebook. If you're interested in my thoughts on that notebook as a bullet journal, I will link my full review for you. And I'm moving into a Bujo Almanac A5 notebook, which I am very excited about. I've actually had this journal sitting on my shelf since October, and I finally get to use it. I'll definitely be doing a full review once I've had the chance to use it for a few months, so watch out for that. Okay, so let's get started. The first spread I always like to set up in my journal is my grid spacing. I find that having this at the very front means that I can turn to it in an instant and I'm not wasting a bookmark leaving it there all of the time. If you're not familiar with the grid spacing spread, this is an idea I think popularised by Amanda Rachel Lee here on YouTube and the idea is that it's a place you can write out the specific dimensions of your notebook and figure out some of the more common splits you might have to do for a spread. So I like to indicate what half is as well as quarters and thirds. If I then need to figure out a different spacing, I can normally do that with the help of the fact that I already have, for example, quarters laid out. You can use the dots or the spaces, whatever you prefer. I found this especially helpful in this journal because for the first time I'm not using a journal with a standard 5mm spacing. This actually has a 3.5mm dot grid, which is completely different to what I'm used to. I have found myself getting a bit confused in setting up spreads because I would normally remember the numbers I might need in order to split a page into thirds. So this has been really essential and has saved me a lot of time. When I was coming up with a theme for this setup, I knew I wanted it to be something that would really test the paper. As you probably know by now, I'm a big fan of using watercolour in my journal and want to find out quite quickly how much water it can handle. For that reason, I thought painting lots of galaxies would not only be fun, but would also demonstrate how capable the paper was. I started off by creating this little galaxy in the bottom right hand corner of the page. At first I was quite cautious with how much water I was laying down, but as I went on I realised that it wasn't falling into the two main traps that most notebooks do. For example, if you're painting on coated paper, like in the Leutsch term, it will lay on nicely but will also dry quite quickly leaving harsh lines that are difficult, if not impossible, to get rid of. And on uncoated paper, like the Archer and Olive, the moisture just seeps straight through the page. On the opposite side, I wanted to do a little cover page, and although the initial test came out well, I didn't want to risk splashing watercolour everywhere yet, so I switched back to my trusty Archer's watercolour paper. With galaxies, I found the trick to creating something vibrant with depth and glow is to build up in multiple layers. So I start off by making the paper really wet with a large brush so I can drop in colour and let the magical properties of the paint do most of the work for me. I use quite dilute paint, blending the colours together as I go and trying to preserve some of the white of the paper. I make sure everything is fully dry between layers before re-wetting everything and going over with the same colours in roughly the same places. If you're feeling impatient, you can definitely speed up the drying process using a hairdryer or other heat tool. I'll leave a full list of colours that I use throughout the video down below because there is quite a big range, but for this one I wanted to focus on some blues and turquoises with a hint of pinky purple. I found one of the paints I enjoyed using most was a paint from Daniel Smith called Moonglow, which is this gorgeous deep purple, which separates out with some blue and pink particles too. I think in the end, this painting took four main layers to build up the depth that I was looking for. 
Once you're happy with it, you can splatter stars across the page using white ink, white gouache, acrylic paint, or even a white pen. And this normally just brings it alive. Then all that's left is to cut it out and stick it in. I have a print of this up in my Etsy shop, so if you're interested in having a copy for your own journal or your wall, be sure to check out the link in the description below. The final detail for me is just adding the year with these stamps that I got off Amazon. I don't have a white ink pad, so just dip them in the pot of ink I had. Not exactly conventional or the neatest method, but it worked well enough. Once I was done with my cover page, it was time to get started on my actual spreads for the setup. In my last journal, I made space to reflect on the things that I wanted to keep, what I wanted to get rid of, which ones to add, and which ones to shift and change. So I came up with a final list of spreads and tried to arrange them in the most logical manner for me. So the first spread I wanted to do was my future log. This is one of my most used yearly spreads. You might notice that I haven't set up a key or an index. To be honest, I don't use either of them very much. I've been using the bullet journal system for nearly four years and I'm very familiar with my own system of symbols so I'm skipping right past that and going straight to the future log. I think of the future log as interchangeable with the year at a glance spread, where you might just have all of the date of the whole year on one page. So a future log usually involves setting up at least six months in advance. There are lots of different styles and I'm going to show you my preference, but essentially you'll set out the months so that you can see what dates land on what days of the week for future planning and there'll be some sort of space for you to fill in events or appointments or birthdays or anything else you want to bookmark. Once I'm done filming this video, I'll go back and transfer across anything I need from my old bullet journal into this one. This is a pretty similar setup to what I did in my last bullet journal. Because I work shifts, my schedule changes from week to week, so I can't just have it as a given that I'll be at work Monday to Friday. Instead, I write in the shifts that I'm working each day and sometimes have this booked months in advance. For that reason, I like to have enough space to write at least one thing on every day for an entire month. I think I saw Metro Boulet Bujo using a tab system and so thought I would try it out last year. For me it gives the right balance of having a vertical log with enough space to also have a little mini calendar at the top. The bonus is that it also gives me space to decorate on either side so it can tie in with the rest of my theme. I have tried quite a few other layouts over the years and this one is definitely the one that has worked best so far. This year I decided to use stickers instead of writing out every single month. I wanted to design and create them myself so they fit into the style that I wanted, which was clean and clear. They fit into a 5x5mm dot grid perfectly, although as you can see they work on the slightly smaller dot grid too. They're printed on recycled sticker paper which is both white and matte so that it blends into the background of the paper and it is also easy to write on. In the UK we like to have our week starting on Monday. I swear my mind was blown when I found out some people start their weeks on Sundays. Like that's halfway through the weekend, how does that make sense? If you know, please let me know down below. So anyway, these are Monday to Sunday stickers. I found it a lifesaver because the last two times I set up my journals, I've either miscounted or mislabeled a day, which has definitely led to me booking appointments on days that were totally not correct. So this time, I know I'll be on the right track, 
with no human error in sight. Because of the interest that I've had from some people, even though it's already part way through the year, I'll still be popping these stickers up on my Etsy store with both a matte and clear option if that's more your jam. Last setup, I had a specific spread for birthdays and holidays and another page for important information, like when my car insurance ran out, but I realised I wasn't really using it. So amalgamating all of that into my future log is much more efficient. That means that the next pages I'm setting up are for my mood and sleep trackers. For these, I wanted my galaxy to be almost cracking through the page into reality, and I wanted to use some much brighter colours. I started off with some pinks and yellows, which I associate more with happy colours, and transitioned into calmer and more soothing purples and blues at the bottom. I made sure that I included a darker border around the edge so that it creates the illusion of some distance and outlined the whole illustration with a black fine liner so that it looked like cracks from glass or through a wall. I like to track my mood and sleeping habits so that I can see patterns emerge, such as when I'm feeling more anxious or low, how that might impact my sleep and vice versa. I find that having the two trackers to keep up with means I'm much more compliant with it compared to if I had to set it up each month. I have just realised whilst editing this that I haven't set up a colours key on either page so that's something I'll have to go back and do. Essentially what I do is assign a colour to a mood or to a range of hours of sleep and shade in the corresponding square. For example, if I get more than 8 hours sleep, which didn't happen at all in my last bullet journal, I will colour in a square a very pale shade of blue, or if I got no sleep at all, that square would be my darkest shade of blue. Moving on, my next two pages are my wants, needs and waiting on spread. This is one that I knew I was going to include as a development from my wish list from my last journal. In the want space, I like to include things I've really been wanting to try and curb impulse buys, which I am particularly guilty of. This way I can write something down and the date I decided I want it, and then I can come back at a later time and consider whether I still really want that thing. If I do, I can work to save up for it or put it on a birthday wish list or something. Or if after a little bit of time I realise that I don't want it, I can cross it out and be satisfied with the idea that I haven't spent my money on it. The need section is a bit more for things that I might need for work, like a stethoscope, or replacing something essential that's broken, and this allows me to plan for those things and budget accordingly each month. The waiting on spread is specifically for things I am waiting to be delivered, whether that is something I have bought or something I know somebody has sent me. This just helps me to keep track because I am one of those people that will only remember that I had ordered that specific thing when I actually need it and I don't have it. So this is a really useful spread to keep me organised. Another essential tracker for me is my bookshelf or reading tracker. I tried to create a cute little bookshelf and as I read books throughout the year I'll write in the titles. I have had a very similar tracker in all of my journals. I'm a pretty big reader and have been since I was a child. I was one of those kids who read under the covers with a little torch after they were supposed to have been sleeping. I was very shy and introverted as a kid and I think that reading and escaping into fictional worlds was my favourite pastime. Over the years, the amount I've actually been able to read has fluctuated with having to actually be an adult spending time studying and reading medical books instead, I've definitely not read as much as I would like to. Nowadays, reading has mostly been renegated to long journeys on public transport like trains and planes, being on holiday, and then reading for a short time before going to sleep to help switch off my brain. I like a large range of genres, but over the last couple of years, I've found myself reading almost all fiction, most of which is fantasy. I don't mind that, but do find that sometimes this means that certain books roll in together and so I'd like to branch out a bit more this year. I don't have specific goals of what I want to read each month or how many books I'd like to read in a year, 
because I know that putting pressure on myself to read means I rush through books and I don't actually absorb them or enjoy them as much. I read most of my books on my Kindle, but I also like to listen to audiobooks using Audible when I'm driving to and from work. I find listening to books a very different experience to physically reading, because I tend to find it much easier to build worlds and visualise things if I'm actually seeing the words in front of me. So in essence, this is just a nice visual layout of the books I'm going to be reading in 2020. On the left, there is the list of books that I would like to read with the author and the start and finishing dates. And on the right is my bookcase of finished books. If you have any recommendations for me, let me know in the comments down below. The next page I'm setting up is my goals spread for 2020. I'm leaving it blank for now because I'm still just cementing what I want my intentions to be for 2020 rather than jumping in with the obvious stuff. I like to split it into multiple categories to help focus my mind rather than choosing certain things which might be less significant. The sections I have chosen after much deliberation are my work within medicine, how I want to be running my small business including goals for this channel and my Instagram account, financial goals which might be based on savings or working towards buying a house with my partner, fitness and health which for me is very much both physical and mental, and finally some goals for travelling. The last big trip that I did was to Peru a few years ago and I definitely have that itch to get back out there but find it difficult to balance time and finances to allow us to do those things while still working towards bigger goals. Because I am travelling less, one of the long-standing pages I have cut from this page is my world map which had the various countries I visited marked. I found I wasn't using it enough to make it a useful part of my journal, although did love having that visual representation to hand. The final spread that I'm setting up is not a particularly functional one, although I do like having it there as a way of creating focus for the year. I toyed with the idea of having a word for 2020, but in the end decided on a quote to guide me. For this illustration, I used a little online tutorial which I'll link below by Socia Creates, who really inspires me with her galaxy and cloud spreads. This one in particular caught my eye and I thought it would be perfect for leading into my pages for March. I think now is a really good point to talk about how this journal has handed the watercolours that I've thrown at it so far. You may have been able to see from this video how much water the page has held. I've been able to work the paper very similarly to watercolour paper, painting with wet paint onto wet paper blending colours and reworking it to my heart's content. One thing that I've been really impressed with is the way that the paint actually disperses on the paper and the beautiful texture that you get where the paint spiders across the page. All importantly, despite using my biggest brush to hand and working back and forth on the same section of the page, I can confirm that remarkably nothing has bled through to the other side. I think this paper is quite literally indestructible with art supplies. This makes me so, so, so excited to keep using it and to see what I can create over the coming months. I wanted the lettering on my quote to be quite simple in contrast with the illustration, and I used the stamps and cursive writing that I've been using throughout the rest of the setup. The quote reads, learn from yesterday, live for today, hope for tomorrow, which I believe is by Albert Einstein. 
With all that having been said, it's time for the final flip through of my 2020 setup. Here are all of the spreads I've set up. I hope you will like this one, I'm loving this galaxy theme. I still try to keep it really functional because that's what a setup needs to be, but couldn't resist adding my own touches to make it work for me when I'm going to be looking at it most days over the next six months. Alright, so that is the entire setup. I hope you enjoyed this video, please like it if you did and subscribe if you haven't already. Remember it's not that long until March and I'll be setting up those spreads and getting that plan with me up very soon. So keep an eye out over the next week or so for that one. I hope you're all having a lovely day and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.